Hello everybody, my name is Luke Mar, and this is Hot Mode. and today on Hot Mode, we are coming to you with another Okachor show reaction, the second of the three that we will be doing in video form. It's not Margiela, I know you're all gonna be like, where am I? It's coming, calm down, give your fingers a break, but don't, because I love, I love a click clack on a keyboard. We're gonna be reacting to Simone Rocha's Haute Couture collaboration collection with Jean-Paul Gaultier. The thing is, I would say out of all of the shows, or one of the big, big shows of the season was Simone Rocha's Jean-Paul Gaultier. was probably one of the most hotly anticipated collections because every season, Jean-Paul Gaultier himself selects a fashion designer to create looks for his Haute Couture line. And the designer who is the mix of the beautiful worlds of Hong Kong and Ireland, Simone Rocha, came together to create this beautiful collection of Haute Couture proportions and propensities, and I'm just excited to talk about it, discuss it, because I would say out of most of the Haute Couture collections that Gautier has done with different designers, so this is probably one of the most synergized of aesthetics in terms of it. I just genuinely think that Simone, who really understood her own brand aesthetic, ethos, house codes, also really didn't pull from a bunch of places that were not within her own grasp realm and understanding for the most part and really sort of tried to bring together her world and the world of Gautier in interviews that was what she was trying to do. She was trying to find the two elements where her brand and Gautier meshed and overlapped and bring that into the world of Haute Couture. So we have a lot to discuss. There is going to be a channel member version of this video, which will be longer and it's a sort of reaction to the entirety of the show. But if you're not a channel member, listen, this version also very good. There's a lot to discuss, a lot to get into. So without further ado, let's, let's get this party started. The first look we have to discuss, obviously, is this sheer pannier style. I mean, I love it. I think it's beautiful. And in reality, it's in this beautiful organza. It's a silver and gold metallic organza, I believe. And what we can see here is a lot of these motifs that I believe are actually all hand-painted. And they're actually a reference to the Le Tatouage Jean-Paul Gaultier collection, which is probably one of the most iconic and most well-known. It's essentially where Gaultier did all of these sort of tattoos to like prints and motifs on mesh styles that made it look like you had tattoos on your body, even though you're wearing a shirt. Simone took a bunch of the motifs from that collection and then did hand-painted versions on this sheer style, and they're in green. Now, the thing that really jumps out to me as an American is on the American dollar bill, you actually can see a little pyramid and the top has like a triangle with an eyeball in it. And that actually, I did not know this, is called the Eye of Providence, which came about in like 1782 for the American dollar bill. It came out like around the American Revolution kind of time. And so what it was was a way for God to be an overview of human beings or something. So that's that's what that is. I don't know how Illuminati it is, and I assume Simone Roche is probably not part of the Illuminati in case that's what you're wondering. But I just think that there's also just these two eyeballs with the big sort of flashes of green over the bus line, which is something we'll talk about in a little bit as well. The pannier came about in the 18th century, Marie Antoinette, you know, that's kind of where we know it from. It's the big sort of side hoop things that make your hips look crazy and you can't fit through a doorway. And that is what Simone created and was referencing in this collection. Simone has been doing this since I believe it's her second or first collection. I believe it's second and it's fall 2013. She's been adding these little sort of hip elements to her little dresses. They weren't as drastic as this, but if we look again at what Simone is going to do throughout most of this collection, she is referencing not only Gautier, but also herself and her work. And she's also very forthcoming about the fact that Gautier did inspire a lot of her work when she was at CSM, you know, San Jose Martins. She was in, you know, university where she was studying fashion design and all those things. So there's definitely a lot of Gautier isms, but at the same time, Gautier, as a designer, has been working for so long that there are very few designers that can't say that they are not nodding to Gautier, even if they know or they don't know that they're nodding to Gautier, because Gautier's work is so expansive in terms of what he's explored and looked at and sort of brought up and referenced. So I don't even blame her for doing it. I mean, like, she's allowed to do it, obviously, because it's a Gautier collection, but Le Tatouage is definitely coming through in this collection, and at the same time, we are synthesizing a lot of her own work. And we'll talk about sheer styles as we go on. Next up, we have this beautiful, fully laced up 
gorgeous pink doll like moment. Simone did speak about the fact that the iconic sort of cone corset bra that Madonna wore, which was really the sort of mainstreaming moment for Jean Paul Gaultier as well, is the first memory she had of JPG. I assume partially where this inspiration is coming from. There is a lot of layered nuances of Simone utilizing pink like this and utilizing different sort of strings and ribbons and all that sort of jazz. But I think that this is more so of a real Gaultier nod than anything else. Now, Gaultier's inspiration for the corset has been there for quite some time. And I believe that the first time that he really, really did it was 1983. And then Madonna had a custom version made for her and it was very controversial and all that jazz. And that's why, you know, it is what it is. But it was also really inspired by his grandmother and the clothing that she wore, like the bras and the girdles and the corsets in the 1940s and the 1950s. And so he would like fish them out of her closet when he was a little kid. And obviously there's that iconic picture of the teddy bear with the cone bra, but there isn't really a cone bra here. But Simone says that this style is actually made up partially of silks, but also this corset jacquard. The the person that I think is amazing when it comes to lingerie and lingerie history is Cora Harrington. I don't know if you know her, lingerie addict on Twitter. But Cora has said that this lingerie jacquard that Simone notes is actually called Coutille or Couti, and it's a fabric of choice for corsetry for decades because it's light, sturdy, and stretch resistant. That's the motif I assume that we're seeing not only just in the, I believe it has to be the sleeves and part of the bodice, that sort of reflective style, but it might also be that dark pink with the light sort of cream, the, the bodice as well. The other element that I found really, really intriguing, and we'll talk more about it as we go on, is all of the lacing up of the corset, helping to contour the body. We can see them on the sides of the bodice. We can see it on this skirt with the tulle petticoats underneath. Gautier has been referencing corsetry again since 1983. We can see in pictures of Dita Von Tees or Gautier himself lacing up corsets in the back. There are styles like this that, you know, probably are the basis. Gautier wanted to make a corset and recreate a corset, but he wanted to do a long and lengthier dress version, which is where we kind of get this from. I also assume it's where we get the pink color from and also the coutille sort of jacquard motifs and all that jazz. And I think the great thing about this picture of Dita Von Tees in the style is that we get to see the back of the corset where the lacing up actually takes place. It's very cool. And I like the fact that Simone again is sort of creating her own silhouette with the corset. She's not using the cone bra just immediately. Rather, she's slowly inching us in. I like the fact that you have the double facing of the jacquards. I just, I think it's a cool look. This next look is very much so, I would say, Simone, but also, again, Gautier. Now, the thing is, there is this sort of embellishment of the bust area, and Simone said that when she got to the Jean-Paul Gautier Atelier, the thing that she was taken with most was the fact that there were all these different mannequins with the busts of the measurements of the Gautier clientele because there actually is a Gautier au couture clientele that still exists, which I think is, A, really cool, and B, really cool that... Jean-Paul Gaultier is like, oh yeah, I'll let everybody kind of, you know, do that and sell to my customer. But Simone has always sort of been intrigued by the bust area. It's something that she's been working with for quite some time as a designer. I mean, we can look back at, I'm going to say that I think the first time that we really see it is fall 2013. And she did this sort of bedazzled moment on these sheer, sometimes beige, sometimes black dresses. And we can also look at, again, all of the sort of beige sheer styles and look at the references here as well. But we can see that there is definitely a lot of referencing going on there. And again, we have this organza that is beigey, even though it's like metallic silver gold, but it's beigey and meant to sort of, to me, look like sheer. We can also see that there is a reference, I believe it's spring 2001 au couture, where these little sort of tendrils of bedazzlement sort of fringe strips drape themselves down the front of the dress. And so in reality, I think that that's probably also where this reference point is coming from. We can see the snakes on it, again, hand-painted, le tatouage. It's all coming in, it's all moving and grooving its way through. But Gautier has been doing fringe for quite some time. It's something that he's been looking at, I believe, at least since the late 1990s? maybe early 90s as well. Again, I'm not a Gautier head, so I'm doing a lot of research as we go here. If you have information, please let your good sister know. But we can also see that since the 1980s, Gautier has been doing bedazzled sort of styles at the bust. There were these sort of bras that he made out of, I don't know, beads and 
bugles and pedals and leathers and things like that that he put over top of knitwear dresses. So there's always been that reference to sort of embellishing the bust area. I mean, if it wasn't with a conical bra, it was with other things. And so again, you can see where Simone Roche's work and Jean-Paul Gaultier's work are synthesizing here. Now look for something again that I really, really love. We have this beautiful pink pannier dress. It's really lovely. It's super sort of tea and chic and so sweet. Again, there's references to Marie Antoinette and the panniers and things like that. Marie Antoinette will get into a little bit more later. But the thing that I would say is really, really interesting about the look is all of the ribbon lacing that runs from literally the straps of the dress all the way down to the hem of the dress. The little ribbons sort of flow out and sort of dangle off the dress. Again, fringe, it comes in a lot. The thing about these bows compared to most of the other bows is they're really loosely done. They're not tight and pulled and sort of sucking anybody in. And that to me is really intriguing. Here's the thing. Again, we can look at a bunch of Jean-Paul Gaultier dresses. I believe there's a 2003 corset dress. We can look at all the dresses that we saw earlier of the corset styles. But I also find it really interesting that Beth Ditto, who is a plus size singer, actually walked a Gaultier runway, I believe for spring 2011 and wore a dress where there were a bunch of these loose ribbons that sort of fell down the front of her dress and the sleeves and things like that. Now, Simone Roche's work to me has never really been very strict, confining, and like stereotypical sexy. It's never been something that is in your face saying a woman should look like this. Rather, I think Simone has always utilized proportions and silhouettes in a way where she allows things to be sexy, intriguing, intelligent all at once. And it doesn't have to conform to this idea of like an hourglass waist figure, skin tight, body con, all that jazz. No. In reality, a penne can be sexy. A big sort of jacket can be sexy. There's so much about her work that doesn't confine it to this really narrow and also sort of thin ideal of what the body on a woman should look like. And so I think there's a really interesting layering of plus size models on Gautier's runway, but also just even the idea of the corset, which normally we think of, and we think of laced up really tight and really hard and really harsh. Here it's undone. Here the corset doesn't have to be tight, firm, locking somebody in, even though again, the notion of the corset locking people in and sort of, you know, hurting them and their bodies isn't historically actually super duper accurate. And Gautier also transformed the notion of what the corset was when he made the corset dresses, you know, in the 80s. But again, there's so much to get into. But I love this look because I just think again, synergizing their aesthetics. But this one to me feels very, not only heavily Gautier referenced, but also really heavily Simone putting her stamp and silhouette on the look. Look five, honestly, I think that there genuinely is, again, the sort of nice, beautiful references. I love the red embellishments on the bust, and I love the fact that the red sort of comes in on these little bedazzled strips. We're seeing all the referencing come in again of the strips and the fringes and things like that, the sheer coloring. I do love the fact that there's always a sort of gorgeous little red detail. And we have this gorgeous little embellished hat. I mean, the embellishments, the crystals are Simone through and through. It's something that I love to see. They're always wonderful. And I just, I think I'm proud of her. Now, next up, we have, again, a skirt suit with a pannier built in. It's a little not a crop jacket, I would say. I wouldn't say it's crop, but a black suit blazer that has the conical cone bra and then a panniered skirt to me. Again, beautiful, lovely referencing. The bullet bra, very much so, something that came around in the 1940s and the 1950s and was sort of building into this idea of the perfect woman's silhouette, even though when we look back at it now, we're like, that's crazy. Poke your eye out. It's also a reference to the iconic conical bra that Madonna wore. Madonna sort of called Gautier up, I believe, after she saw it, and she was like, I want that. And then she had it paired with a pinstripe suit, which in reality plays on this idea of Gautier and gender and this idea of defying what gender should look like. A pinstripe suit is normally like associated with a man. And so the idea of this conical bra corset being layered underneath and being worn over top of a pair of pinstripe pants, but underneath a pinstripe suit jacket plays on this idea of defying gender norms for men and women. And it was super controversial when it came out. I believe that Vatican was like, no, bad, because Madonna had like a Pepsi campaign that she was doing. Essentially, the Vatican was like, stop buying Pepsi. And everybody's like, okay. which I don't know, I feel however you want to feel about Madonna. I get that. But at the same time, I just think the sheer terror that she inspired in mass elements of the world in the 1980s is kind of crazy to me. And also very much so trailblazing because I don't think that we would be existing in the world that we exist in if it wasn't for little moments like this. But back to the Simone look, 
I love it. I think it's beautiful. I think it's quintessential Simone. In reality, it's a gorgeous blazer that's done so, so effortlessly. Yes, are certain elements and proportions of these styles really kind of ridiculous and over the top? Absolutely. But at the same time, I do think that the blazer fits phenomenally. I do think that taking the pannier out of the skirt would still prove that Simone Rocha knows how to make clothing that women also like to wear because she has a very dedicated fan base. She has a very dedicated clientele that likes to buy her clothes. There's a reason that she has like three or four stores that are independently owned around the world. It's because people like to buy Simone Rocha clothes. So I think this to me is really an element of her proving it. And of course, you know, the makeup done. The crystals all over the eyeballs, I just think is quintessential chic elegance. Now next up is look seven. This is something that I thought was really, really interesting is this is a crochet dress. Now Gautier has been doing lace styles for forever. And we'll talk about it a little bit more in depth later when we get to another crochet style. But this I believe was all sort of dipped in some sort of metallic covering or film that makes it silver. So it originally was white and then it was dipped to become this sort of silver. But I love the silhouette. I also love the exposure of the corsetry underneath, the fact that you can see it and it's strapless and it's sheer, I think is cool. Simone Rocha, the reason that I'm wearing this sweater right now is because Simone has a real appreciation of the Irish history of craft when it comes to knitting and when it comes to crochet. I believe that in the 1800s when the potato famine was happening for a lot of young Irish women, the way to make things that were similar to lace, which was really expensive and a luxury to buy, they started to do crochet styles, which looked like lace, but in reality was cheaper to make and could also be sold to people. That actually kept a lot of those young women from starving, which is really crazy because potato famine, pretty wild. I think that maybe Simone is paying homage to the history of those sort of crafts of... She's also more like... I also think that she's paying a lot of homage to Gautier and his use of knitwear and things like that throughout his collections, but I also have a feeling that there's a lot of sort of Irish lace, Irish crochet, Irish knit being tapped into here. Now the next look I genuinely think is so, 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 so Simone Rocha. Now I do know that there are puffed sleeve styles by Gautier, but I do know that the first time I feel like I was really seeing a lot of puff sleeve from Simone was the fall 2015 collection. And at the same time, the sort of black silk from that fall 2015 collection also sort of comes in because the whole look is done in this black silk. I just, I love the sleeves. I think she takes a lot of inspiration from Victorian sort of dress and puff sleeves and things like that. But I love the fact that they're almost like deflated on the top. Like there isn't a rounding at the top of the shoulder. Rather, it's just sort of slashed, creates a much flatter sort of feeling. But then as we move down, we can see the pannier is still built in. We have the loose sort of lacing of the ribbons, which I think is really, really cool. To me, this is a very Simone coated style. We can find a bunch of references, I bet you, to the Gautier. I mean, the, the lacing and the ribbons and all that stuff. But to me, this feels like quintessential Simone Rocha, and I love getting to see it. I mean, like even down to the shoes, little brogues. She talked about in an interview that she used to really like wear a lot of her mom's shoes and a lot of her mom's shoes were like Prada, Brogues and Comme de Garçons sort of dress shoes and things like that. And I, I just think Simone Rocha as like a, not only a designer, but as somebody that creates clothing based on what she would possibly like to wear is also a really intriguing study because it so differs from this idea of like what we think of when, we, when it comes to fashion. But at the same time, there's a reason that she sells clothes and people like to buy her clothes is because I think they like the way that she dresses and they like the product that she creates. All right, so the next look we have is this black taffeta style. It has a really intriguing silhouette and it's a silhouette that we see a lot throughout the collection. I'm not gonna talk about each individual look, but rather I'm gonna kind of synthesize them all here. Call me Simone Rocha for Jean-Paul Gaultier. But the thing that I find really, really intriguing is you have this silhouette that's called like a pannier hip, which to me, tracks for Simone Rush. I mean, like even her little pearly kind of eggy looking bags, it, it all kind of comes together. But that's what you're seeing, I would say, from about the waist down to the knee. And then it turns into a mermaid skirt, which Simone also talks about. I should know that oof means egg. But this silhouette is something that Simone has been exploring. I would say more so, I think we saw it starting in like 2018, spring 2018, as she does this ruching at the knee that creates the shape sort of in the hip area and then sort of flares out at the bottom. Bottom. It's something that she explored more and more as seasons went on, but I would say spring 2018 is really where you start to see it. And that's also really where you start to see for the first time Simone doing like gowns. I think she was always doing dresses that were kind of bigger, but she was never doing like a gown where things were hitting the floor and it was floor length kind of drama. It was usually 
not constricting of the foot area. Rather, I think 2018 is really where it begins. Loves a mermaid skirt. Loves. Lives, laughs, loves a mermaid skirt. And I think that's where a lot of this comes from. The other thing is I have found dresses where he does, I guess, maybe this like oof motif where he ruches things at the knee and it creates a little bit of a flare underneath. You can look at a lot of Gautier collections, I would say more so in the 80s, probably maybe early 90s, but you can see that there and it exists. But the thing that I also find really, really intriguing is the fact that you have these beautiful red feathers. I believe that they're ostrich feathers and they've been cut really, really smallly at the edge to create these little poofs, which is not something super abnormal for a couture, I would say. But I think for Simone, it's not really something that I think of. But what I do think of is that Simone, I believe for the fall 2017 collection is the first time we see it. You see this blood red, really vibrant, really sort of visceral red, shade of red that comes in and then it sticks in almost every single collection after that. Now we did see it in that fall 2017 collection where it's on black, but the red sort of comes in all different colors, shapes, sizes, but usually it also always finds itself in each collection on a black look style, black anything. And I think it's really intriguing to see Simone take that moment and sort of bring it in here and utilize the feathers rather than the floral and flower motifs that she normally does it in when it comes to her collections. And that's because Simone, I think, also really wanted to build herself into this haute couture sort of atelier idea and lifestyle and do things that maybe for her brand isn't really always sustainable, maybe financially or sustainable from a production value or sustainable just as a, you know, sort of smaller independent label, you know, actually doing things that are smart for the business. So I like the fact that she's leaning into that. But I do think that it's cool just to sort of see not only silhouettes that Simone did, but also the fact that there are silhouettes that Gautier did, but also that continuation of every single collection has that blood red that you really want to just stare at for days. But she didn't do it in a floral. I like that she did it in the feathers. I think it's cool. I think it's smart. I think it differs from what we normally think of her as doing. And like, again, I think it's one of the reasons why I really was drawn to this collection is there's so much of her in it and there's so much of Gautier that's layered and nuance too. Now the next look that we see is this big long taffeta dress, but it's actually backless as well. Now it's in this lovely, lovely blue. It's very sort of, you know, starchy and stuffy and Simone really kind of loves things that crinkle and wrinkle. And I feel like there wasn't really like a trench coat moment per se in this look, but to me, it looks more like a technical sort of fabric. Like it looks to me like a, a floor length parka that's been sort of volumized to become like a gown. I don't know what it is. Something about the neckline, something about the sort of flaps that cover the bust area. Again, this emphasis of the bust, even though it's not really super duper emphasized. And we can see from like really pretty early again, Simone collections like spring 2015, there's trench coats that are turned into dresses, fall 2018, you know, again, the red, it's there, the sheer red, it all comes together. But this idea of turning trench coats into dresses and becoming part of and layering of these styles, which isn't super duper normal, it's intriguing to me. But the other thing that's really, really cool is since at least the fall 1990 collection has been doing these sort of sheer backless styles where there is an exposure of like the back and the butt and things like that. So I love the fact that again, Simone in the front it really is this big, voluminous, over-the-top sort of style. It's what she's known for, but in the back, it exposes the back. We're seeing the back of the, the body. It's cool. I think it's layered. I think it's nuanced. I think this was a really great collection. I know I keep saying that, but it's the truth. So next up, we got this black gown, which is a high-low style, and it's actually, I believe it has a bustle on it, which is intriguing to me, but it's gathered and draped in plissé, a little black silk organza. Now, I found images of high-low dresses from Gautier where there is a lot of texturing here. It's more so ruching. And then I found a dress from 1986 that actually is a black, it's probably more tulle than organza, draped, not really plissé, but more so draped and whisked up high low dress it's paired with a black leather moto jacket which i think is intriguing that simone actually didn't put a moto jacket on because there was that whole season i believe it's in 2021 where she did a bunch of moto jackets i think it's cool that simone is referencing it but it looks totally different i do think that the swags and wiggles of the plissé is really cool i think it adds a different texture and then this is something that's really really subtle i mean a the hair the hair earrings are wild very goatee to me but as we can see, there is this little ruffling of like an underskirt. Now that's 
a Simone reference. And it's really sort of subtle and easy, but if you look at Simone, I believe, second or first collection, I think it's second, Fall 2013, there are these asymmetrical gatherings that appear on the collection. And then I believe uh, for what, spring 2014, she starts to add these little random sort of bands of ruffles across different pieces. And so Simone is keeping, again, herself and her aesthetic and her things there. It's just subtler. It's easier. It's something that you have to look at the detail for. But again, there's Simone in there. Now, when I saw our next look, I was like, oh, this is really just more so Simone than anybody else. There's not really a lot of Gautier in it because it's this white button down that hits around the top of the hip and then turns into like a tool asymmetrical drape thing. And like Simone, asymmetrical drapes, it's there from her very first collection. But the idea of like the tool and the button down, I literally look at spring 2019. There's a white dress with a Peter Pan collar rather than like a sort of sharp regular Oxford collar that has the draping and it's again Simone playing on menswear and all that jazz. But in reality, I also did a little bit more research and I found this little look from spring 1998 Haute Couture where Jean-Paul Gaultier did the little collar just like that and a white button down shirt with pocket, but it has little bits of, I believe, lace uh, at the bottom. And it's not a dress per se, but it's a shirt that has a little bit of a bump, a little bit of a high-low action, a little bit of frill. And again, I just think that Simone understands and took things that really truly were hers and really found where Gautier played into that. I just think it was really, really smart. The other thing that I do really think is very, very chic is the little sailor hats. Again, we'll talk about like the Mariner tops later, but Simone doing these silk sailor hats are just so cute and chic and elegant with the lacing of the ribbons all throughout them. And speaking of the Breton stripe, the Mariner's top, Gautier is the king. I mean, Coco Chanel is the one that sort of took it from the Navy and made it sort of fashion, but Gautier is the one that made it mainstream and the one that has played on it season after season after season. I mean, of course, this is the iconic picture of him in the Breton stripe top. And I don't know exactly when it came about, to be completely honest, but it is something that I would say is probably the most prevalent house code of Gautier. I know there's, that's maybe a hot take to the Gautier heads, but I would say that mainstream wise, the Breton Stripe, it's on all of the perfume bottle, or not all, but a lot of the perfume bottles. It's really sort of very much so Gautier. I've seen it, you know, done in all different versions. He's done gown versions, he's done shirt versions, he's done a bunch of styles. And it's something that I would say almost every designer that's done the collaborations has really looked at and played on and sort of touched upon. Simone did a really, really brilliant version, which is this sheer top that actually the Breton stripe, the horizontal stripes, are made up of navy blue ribbons with little bows on them. Now, I know that in the age of the bow, which love a bow, really, truly love a bow, everybody wants to, you know, associate with the bow with like a Sandy Liang or whatever. Simone Rocha. It was Simone Rocha. I like, I don't care. Simone Rocha has been doing bows since I, I looked at, I made sure that I did my due diligence. I did my research since at least spring 2016. Spring 2016, she started doing all these different varieties of bows. Some of them had polka dots. Some of them were done with little ebony braid, like cords, like rope. She also did them in like neoprene. So there was all these different varieties of the bow sort of decorating different styles. And she even did a sheer version of the bow in like some sort of organza in black the following season. So what, fall 2016. She's done it for a long time. So I love the fact that we're getting to see it here. I think it was one of the most brilliant looks, even though it was so simple and easy and elegant. It just corroborated the idea of Gautier and Simone. I also love the fact that there is that iconic sort of sheer style of the Gautier Breton stripe that Rihanna wore, although obviously it's sheer rather than seeing the blue, but the stripe is there. It's obviously a Gautier house code. And so I think that's also where the sheer element came in for this top is that reference to the way that Gautier did sheer stripes. Now, the little hip pads, they're a little crazy. They're a little kooky. But to me, again, they play on this idea of proportions, body, panniers, hips exploding. It's weird. It's wacky. It's wild. But it's wonderful. I think this is probably like the look to me. Now, next up, we have this beautiful strapless dress, and I believe that this is a fully crocheted style. So this is in a traditional ivory Irish crochet. It has clear crystal daisy embroidery mounted on certain elements, so that's where you see those crystals coming in. Again, crystals, Simone, very much so there, always. But Simone, 
is Irish, part Irish, part from Hong Kong, part Chinese. There's this really, really intriguing element of the history of Ireland and knitting and crocheting. Now, the thing is, Irish lace is very sort of beloved. And the reason that I'm wearing this little sweater right now is because, you know, a reference to the beautiful Aran knits. This isn't an Aran knit, but it's a reference to. I have an Irish great aunt and Alice, shout out. And Alice still will knit together a little beautiful Irish sweater and they're gorgeous and they're stunning and they're wonderful pieces of history to me. But in reality, the iron knit is something that Simone has referenced season on season on season. And her dad, who's also a designer, has referenced that as well. And I think that's where a lot of that comes from. But the thing is, Irish lace, which was very sort of sought after, was something that during the potato famine became very, 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 very expensive and very difficult for a lot of people to make, especially young women and young girls. And so what happened was, in order to make money and to sort of substitute for that, young Irish women started to crochet. And so that was a way that a lot of them survived starving from the, the potato famine, which is crazy. Again, I love this reference. I love it. I think it's beautiful. I think it's gorgeous. I think it's a wonderful homage. We can also see that there are uh, knit styles that Gautier did over time that were sort of layered over these big long dresses. So I think that this is more so Simone than Gautier perhaps, but there is nods and history and references to, you know, Gautier in there because he did do a lot of knit and sort of uh, crochet styles. But it's also something that Simone has been playing with since at least her spring 2014 collection. There were these sort of plasticized crochets that she was doing even then. It's there. And it's a really cool, beautiful homage, I think, to the perseverance of the Irish people and specifically Irish women. The other cool look that I love is it's essentially a beige sheer dress with the crystals and then flows down into this gorgeous little sort of crystal fringing. But I wanted to talk about here is the use of plus size models. It's something that Simone has been doing for a long time. But Gautier also was very much so one of the first designers to really bring plus size models onto his runways. I believe that in the 80s he did it. People have said that. I can't find any images of it. And it's not that I don't believe that he did. I, I believe he did. But I just can't find any images from when I was looking for them. But I have found images of when in 2006, two different times he had plus size models on his runway. One was Crystal Renge, who actually I believe was a finale model for one of his collections and she wears this beautiful sheer draped ruched flower style. Another was Velvet D'Amour who wore a Gautier look down the runway in 2006 as well. I believe that she was actually a size 26 at this point when she's wearing this look. It's you know corset and lace and all those boudoir sort of styles that are very Gautier. And then of course Beth Ditto became another famous name that would walk the Gautier runways in 2011. Gautier has a lot of history of having plus size models on his runway ways. Simone Russia is also very much of the same. She understands that women are not just this fashion industry idea of thin women and that's the only woman that exists. Rather, I think again, it's a really cool and good thing to see on the Oak Couture runways because we really did not see a lot of plus size models at all on the Oak Couture runways. Pretty disheartening to me, to be completely honest. So I love the fact that we get to see Tess. I love the fact that we get to see Simone sort of just doing a beautiful look like this where you can actually look and say, oh my gosh, wow, beautiful, stunning, gorgeous. Oh my God, wonderful. The body that, you know, is not the only body that is beautiful. They're beautiful, of course, but there's a lot of other bodies that are also beautiful. Now, this next look is this beautiful tulle, full ballerina frou-frou dress. The skirt is covered in the feathers. It's this big, beautiful sort of tutu experience. But there's also this sort of harness style at the bodice that covers up the tulle on the bodice. And it's, of course, embellished and embezzled with crystals and all that. Very Simone, naturally. But Simone is also somebody that has been doing a lot of these sort of of harnessy styles on the runway and that are usually embellished. I believe fall 2019, we saw a couple of those styles. But Gautier himself has been doing a lot of sort of leather belting harnessing style since at least the 1970s. He used to live in London in the 70s and was really taken with punk aesthetics and styles. And so that's something that he did actually do a line of, I believe, in the late 70s. It was like an S&M line. So I assume it had leather and bondage sort of moments turned into fashion experiences, but it didn't really do super well. So he stopped that specific line. But we can also look at the 1980s. There are leather sort of girdles and harnesses that come on the runway. And then in the 1990s as well, again, it's referenced in different styles, these harnesses, these belts that loop across the stomach. It's something that is very Gautier. And so I like the fact that Simone took it, brought it, did her own thing with it, but still again, references the gorgeousness of the history of Gautier starting in the 70s and coming all the way full circle to today. Now, another cool style is this beautiful red dress that follows. Now, 
again, big, beautiful tool we would associate with Simone. It's in this gorgeous sort of A-line silhouette, lovely, yada, yada, gorgeous straps that are embellished. But the thing that's the coolest to me is the fact that when we look at the bust from the side or the front, it's actually a rose thorn which is wild. So of course, it's probably a reference to the conical bra because it's sharp and pointy and a bra. But here, Simone transformed it and created this sort of upturned little sharp point in a reference to a rose. Now, the ruby rod rose look from the fifth element could definitely be a reference. And luckily, it's not that on the nose, unlike other designers that have done it, which I think is really cool and really great and really wonderful. The other thing that's really intriguing to me is Simone said that the reason that she wanted to go for this sort of rose bust style is that it was a reference to the fact that Gautier would give his models roses when they were done on the runway for his shows. And so it was a way to sort of reinterpret that. And I just think that it was really, really done well. We could also see it on shoes. A lot of the models actually wore these little silk shoes that had the rose thorns on the toe of the shoe which again, I just think really cool, really smart, really wonderful. Now the next look is really intriguing to me again because it's this layering of bodices and corsets, but it's very, very different from all the corsets we've seen before. It's actually kind of partially undone and it uses the loops, uh, the clasps in the front to keep it together. The garters that connect, you know, to the uh, little sort of sexy stockings that would normally go. And there's a sheer dress, a fully white sheer dress with crystals that are bedazzled all over it. But the thing that's really, really cool to me, of course, is the reference A to the corset, boudoir dressing, Gautier's grandmother, all that jazz. But all of these flowers on the front are actually all handmade. Some of them are porcelain, some of them are crystal, some of them are resin. It's just like a cool moment. I think, again, it, it references not only Gautier and Simone Rocha and flowers and all that jazz, but also just it's a utilization of the atelier of Jean-Paul Gautier and what haute couture can be and can do. Listen, is this a super sort of commercial style that a bunch of clients will buy? Maybe not, but at the same time, it's just amazing to see that somebody actually made all these flowers out of little pieces of porcelain. Like, that's wild to me. Now, next up, again, we have a sort of emphasis of the hip. It's this gorgeous sort of pannier style and frou-frou tulle, and then a lace up of the front of the bodice and two lines of gorgeous sort of embellishments, which kind of create like princess seams. You know, they don't run all the way down the front of the dress, but at the same time, like I do find them really intriguing. It brings together the goatee-ness and also the Simone-ness of the whole thing. And Simone's been doing these embellishments since at least spring 2014. So, it's definitely a house coat of hers, but at the same time, the bodice, the tool, it all works together. So the next look that we have this beautiful dress, it's this floor length sort of ivory style. And I believe that it's in a wool and silk matte lacé damask, which in reality is kind of amazing. I love a matte lacé. That's in reality getting the fabric to be raised. So there's sort of little crevices and valleys. And that's what also creates the floral motif in it. But it's actually also based on an apron. So that's kind of why in the front you have this beautiful, gorgeous, lovely silk. It's floor length not apron, most aprons aren't kind of floor length gowns, but in the back actually is exposing a little bit of the back. It has black tulle. So there's this backless dress that Gautier did. I believe that this was the finale of one of his shows where in the front, it's this beautiful sort of white or ivory style. But then at the back, you can see that it's lined in a black tulle and the model fully exposes her derriere, her back, her booty, all of the jazz. And instead of carrying, you know, the bouquet because bridal styles are usually the end of an haute couture style, it's situated between her butt cheeks, which I love. I think it's great. Now, here's the thing, Simone, not really, I would say, a butt cheek floral bouquet kind of gal. And so I do think the fact that it's backless and exposes the back but doesn't show off anything else in that regard is really smart. But I think this is a cool way for her to take a very serious Gautier reference, maybe one that's a little bit more nuanced and niche, and make it her own. It's, it's just, it's cool. And again, even the red gloves, you see that pop of visceral blood red running throughout. Now the next look we have is this sheer pannier style. It has crystals, you know, Oh, it is really, really lovely. And to me, it relates back to the corset style that Kylie Jenner wore for the actual collection and the way that it just starts the bust. But I saved the whole Panye reference to the end of the video, which was a little silly of me. But regardless, if you stayed, you're going to get the good information. Now, I believe that in 1998, Gautier actually did a collection that was based on Marie Antoinette. And I think that's probably where a lot of the Panye for Gautier references come from, Simone. There were a bunch of different Panye styles. They happened. They were gorgeous. They were black. They were white. They, you know, they were layered. They were crinolines. They were nuanced. And I think that that is what 
Simone is very obviously referencing here. But at the same time, she's always done it as well. And so it's a cool moment. Again, another nod. And the thing that I also just loved about the Simone collection is it felt like it was really focused. I feel like a lot of the other designers, it's not that they aren't focused or it's not that they're unfocused, but rather... I think that they pull from a bunch of kind of like iconic references and I don't blame them for a lot of the time because in reality, you know, you don't really know what has been going on or who's been doing it before, yada, yada, yada. Simone is one of the later designers that we've seen in this whole thing. You know, there's time to see what other people do, but I like the fact that there is a focus on certain collections and certain references that aren't like in your face, you know, super on the nose. And I think it's because she's been able to work through a lot of the archive and find things that make sense for her. And that's why I think it's so focused. Now, the finale look is this beautiful bubble hem strapless gown. Now, I believe that it's like Goipur and Chantilly lace. It's lovely and it has a full veil that covers it. Now, Simone has been doing these veils for quite some time. I believe that the first time that she did it is the spring 2014 collection, which is really early on in her career. And she would layer sort of uh, tools and chiffon over top of the models with white style. So it would be like they're, you know, doing a wedding look. And so the idea of Simone doing wedding looks at the end of her collections is not abnormal and not, you know, brand new. And it also fits in with the whole aesthetic and the idea and the just tradition of couture where you show a bridal look at the end. That's the finale look always. But Gauthier has also been referencing this idea of bridal styles, draping, things like that for forever. I mean, we can find this 1997 look where he did, uh, you know, this beautiful sort of corseted kind of veil moment on models. Like if you look at old, Gautier styles, you will find a lot of these big veils that cover models as they do their bridal walks. And so I just think that this is like that perfect, again, mixture of Gautier referencing, but also Simone's own work is very much so present in the collection. And then there's the queen herself. She's just a star. She really is. I love. I really, I thought it was a beautiful collection. I think she did a great job. I think that it was one of the best Gautier collections that we've seen. And it didn't have to be so wow, wow, pow, pow, every single reference that has ever happened ever present. Rather, I think that it was a really good way of her actually channeling her own styles while still really understanding the ethos and the, the essence of Gautier. I'd love to know what you guys all thought of this collection down below. I hope you guys enjoyed. And listen, stay tuned. Margella is coming. I promise. I promise. I'm doing my best. Oh my God, I gotta make sure I get all the references in there. So I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you for watching and TTYL.